today. We are going to have a little fun with some room mics, a few different techniques, uh, a couple of little concept things that I've been doing lately that's been kind of cool. And we're going to carry over one thing from last week also. I know room mics have been kind of a, you know, another one of those questions I get quite a bit about. So we'll try to do a couple things that work no matter what room you're in. So even if uh, you're, you're in a smaller or mid-sized room, it works. If you're in a big room, you know, you can kind of dial it into taste. So these are just a few things that I've been doing recently. So we've got three setups. We have, as you can see in the shot, there's a pair of AT4040s. They're ribbon mics from Audio-Technica that I love. What? Oh, 4080. <laughs> oh, wow. Those are AT4080 ribbon mics from Audio-Technica. Not 4040s. That's a condenser. Too many numbers. Uh, there's one of my favorites on rooms um, almost all the time. That's going to be one of my room mics because they just do a fantastic job. Now, what we're doing with those is I have, I split them out of the patch base. So there's actually, instead of just one stereo setup, we have a, two stereo setups. One of them, clean, no compression. It's just the room. No EQ either. Then the other one, the molt is getting squashed with the the Warm Audio WA76s with the all buttons in mode. I'll go over that in a minute. It's something I kind of started doing recently and I'll, I'll explain why I've been doing it anyway in a minute. Then on top of that, what you can't see, here, let me move the camera. We got two different things happening. First off, I'm gonna go over here to the side. Right there on the wall, we have our 57, that's our holdover from last week. So you can see where it is kind of relative to the drum set. Pointed right at the wall. We are got a little compression. That's actually what you heard in the intro, and it's pretty cool. Now I'm going to go down here to these guys. There's two small diaphragm condensers. I have a pair of MXL V67Ns pointed at the floor, and I've got a photo of that we'll show you in a minute that shows you exactly where they're positioned, and they're, you know, probably about the same distance from the kit, actually about exactly the same distance from the kit as our 4080s right there. So that's our three different setups that we're going to use today, and they all, oh, let me get this camera up a little higher, there we go, they all have a, a very different vibe to them. Some have a little compression, some are, are wide open, and like I said, the 4080s are actually split. I have a clean, uncompressed, and a compressed signal coming from those. And then we have the, the rest of the kit set up. We have the Delphos on the overheads, our PR30s on the toms. We have the, my curved 57 that Joe Vizzetti made on the snare, another 57 on the bottom, 3000 on the hats, and I think the kick is ATM250 on the inside and a CS5 on the outside, and that's our setup. So that way we, we have a little context. It's not just room mics, kind of hear how they affect the drums in general. We also have a few gobos on each side of the kit just to dry it up, just a hair. We weren't necessarily trying to make it dead around the drum set, but just a little bit drier. So when you bring the room mics in, you really hear the effect of the room mics. Now we are about, I want to say maybe 10 feet in front of the kit with those rooms. And I think the 57 is probably about 10, 11 feet away over there on the wall. So there is a fair amount of distance. Now having said that, real quick before Hal comes out, this whole, the 4080s are in a Blum line. So they're, you know, they're figure eight. So they're getting the front and the back. So, you know, you basically have this, right? You know, you have the front of the mics pointing at the kit and you have the back side of the mics getting the room behind them. That even, let's say you had a room half the size of this or much smaller, you can get that kind of thing really close to the drum set and hit it with a touch of compression and actually get kind of a, a room vibe or a space vibe, you know, a, space out of your drum sound vibe with that with a coincident pair like that or with the blum line pair so that's really effective even in smaller rooms you know we could move it back further and make things sound even bigger but i kind of like that eight to ten feet away area it tends to work rather well you know a little compression and you can make things extend or get shorter all right without further ado let's bring dr howe out and i'm gonna hit the control room first off let's just get an idea of what the actual kit sounds like. I'm gonna turn all the rooms off. Just give me some fills and groove. And this is overheads, close mics only, no room mics. Tom sounds 
sound extra good today. I kind of just want to like record some tribal stuff. <laughs> they sound nice. All right, so that's that's that. Now let's let's start going through our room mics. I'm going to start with the 57. Just this is what something we did on last week's broadcast uh, that honestly we had never done before with the 57 here, and it just was one of those things like, wow, that's kind of cool. So let's add it to today's setup. So let's go ahead and give me a little bit of groove and some fills there. So that's just the 57 with nothing else. Now, hey, just play me a, a, a loop of groove, maybe a four bar or two bar phrase with a little fill just the in, every two bars. So I'm gonna turn the mono room off and every two bars I'll turn it on. I'm not cranking. Let me turn it up really loud here. It's the same thing. It's on. So that actually, it's it's mono, but it has. There's something about that 57 pointing at the wall that does something really cool for the snare especially, but it even helps the a little bit of the mid-range on the kick drum even kind of pops out. But let's go one step further. Boom. Same groove. I'm going to add some compression. Go for it. pull in everything. I'm going to start with the compressor off. I'll leave the mic fairly loud. Same thing. No compression. there man if you guys only have one mic that you could put out in a room go hit craigslist for 60 or 70 bucks pick out a 57 and put it against a wall i know you all have a wall in your studio everybody does somewhere it's going to work in there <coughs> and then compress i'm compressing going in because that's just the way i do this but you could easily find a good spot to where it's catching what you wanted and then compress after the fact too i do find though that it, it, it reacts different when you're compressing when it's actually you're actually moving air into a microphone than after the fact but at the end of the day it doesn't really matter as long as you get what you want it's still cool all right so there's our mono setup that's our carryover from last week now let's move to the 4080s clean let's just hear what they sound like how give me a groove again. <laughs> Just the 4080s clean in the room. There's no compression. Go hit some sim. Play on the ride symbol and hit a bunch of crashes for me. The one thing I really like about well, any ribbon, but especially the 4080s, I just I love them is they're smooth on the cymbals. So the, even if you have a drummer that's playing a lot, or maybe you have a drummer that has harsher cymbals, 
this will smooth them out in the room. And that's going to become very important when you start compressing things because cymbals can get really, really gnarly. It also has, a, there's a bit of a nice wall up even in the bass drum. It's tight and focused and it gets a good body from the snare. So let's hear, now a little context. Play the same, Can turn the mono room off. Give me this two bar phrase with a fill at the end of each, okay? Close my only. So that's again, no compression, no EQ. They actually sound really good without compression. And this is why I've been molting them. But there's something cool about any sort of ribbon mic or anything that you can have a figure eight pattern. I like ribbons because they're smooth and they're kind of thick sounding in general. I know they're all a little bit different, but they tend to have this nice low mid to them that makes them kind of thicker and punchy. But because we're in that figure eight pattern, so we have the Blum line, so we're getting the front and the back sides of the mic, it does a really good job of picking up space. And then it's just a matter of aiming, getting them aimed and set up correctly so you're getting a you know pretty even left to right image. Now, I like that sound the way it is. So th again, this is why I've been molting those mics and I'm doing that over here in the patch bay. I'm simply taking my input from that room and our, our top patch bay is half normal so I can take that feed and feed it to the next two mic pre's. So I have the clean ones on 11 and 12, and my compressed ones on 13 and 14. So let's hear what happens, the difference in the compressed. Now let me turn everything off real quick. So I'm going to go between the two. I'll start with the clean. Same thing. there's quite a drastic difference. Now, here's what I'm doing compression-wise on that. I'm, I have the warm audio, the WA-76s. And this is something you could probably emulate inside the box fairly well, too. Or at least I've been able to get close, not quite the same. But I have all the buttons in, and I have the attack as fast as they go, and the release as fast as they go. So fast attack, fast release, all buttons in, and I'm hitting the input quite hard. And I'm pulling the output down. So what it does is it, it, it doesn't add a long tail and it doesn't make cymbals start to sound crunchy because it's, it's literally happening so fast. When you bring it in, which I'll do now with the rest of the drum kit, when I bring it in, it almost acts as a, in a way, a short gated reverb kind of thing. So you can barely tuck it in and it just adds space without sounding like a room. You can then make it louder where you get a room sound, but it doesn't have a long tail to it and it doesn't draw cymbals out. So, hey, play um, the same thing. After four bars, I'm going to kick on our compressed room mics. Even the clean room still sound really good with everything, but the compressed, you can hear a little bit of that extra sizzle kind of in the snare drum a little bit, which is nice. Play a tom groove real quick.
with them a little bit louder, it obviously sounds like a room, but it doesn't, the compressor is reacting so fast on the attack and the release that it's not adding any sustain. It almost has a gated kind of vibe to it, which again, I like because you can tuck it in just a wee little bit and it just adds room around the kit without sounding like a room, or you can crank it up and it sounds like a, a, a short but nice sounding room. And that's why I've been splitting those because sometimes I don't want that compression at all. Or sometimes I might just use the clean and the compress and you can make this really cool sound. You don't got to worry about phase because it's exactly the same spot. Okay, so that's, that's something I've been doing a ton. The last setup we have here, this is something I used to do a lot in my old room down in Hollywood, which was smaller. And I haven't done it as much here. And when we set it up during sound check, it's something I wanted to do. And we set it up and we heard what it did. I'm just like, why did I stop doing that so much? Because this is cool. This is the two mics on the floor. Can you throw that photo up there, brother? Brother Tao? So this is the V67Ns on the floor. Now, the, the trick here is you want to get it as close to the floor as you can without it touching the floor. So we basically get down there. We can, we can run a business card between the microphone and the floor. And what we're doing is we're essentially turning the the mic into you know an omni mic really because it's using the whole floor as this pickup pattern instead of just seeing in front of the mic it's now got this big wide pickup pattern because it's pointing directly at the floor this has kind of a really cool effect it obviously changes the mic now generally the v67n although it actually works really well for this wouldn't necessarily be my first choice because the capsule is a little far back in the in the top of the housing but when we set it up and we're trying, they sounded good. So I'm like, well, who cares? And, and as we all know, there's not really any rules here. So what we're going to do now is let's, let's hear them on their own first. Because quite honestly, on their own, they don't kill me. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of, you go, well, it's a room sound. Give me some groove. That is just those two mics. On their, on their own, the, the snare is kind of thin. It's very bottom snare-y sounding in a way, a little papery. Uh, the toms don't have a whole lot of body, but there's some a decent attack in there. And the kick drum, not a lot of low end, but the kick drum is probably the biggest thing in there. Now, uh, you know, if we solo them up, you kind of go, eh, okay, not, not so great. However, all those things that I just said are kind of eh, are now going to become a strength, actually, when we pull all this in with our other mics. So give me our two bar phrase again. No room mic. Compression. I actually, I think, how I don't know, what was your favorite during sound check? Oh, you like the 57 the best. Oh, that's why we did it on the intro. That makes sense. I actually, is even though the 4080s and the, the compression are probably my overall favorite and usable, having not heard these floor mics in a while, I really love what they do to the kick and the snare and the toms. It just, it adds space around them, but they don't really sound like room mics when you pull them in. Now, if I start to compress, that would change. And this might be, I guess here's my philosophy on this room mic thing, and it's changed a little over the years, because I used to just love compression to the point where 
it was all over my room mics. Now what I've started to do a little bit more is I set up multiple sets of room mics almost all the time. Or if I'm not, maybe I'm doing my 4080s, I'm splitting it so I have a clean and a, and a compressed. But I may have three or four different sets of room mics up. So I have different options. I may find the one or two that I like having compressed and go, oh yeah. And it, when, when you pull it up with the faders, it just sounds bitching right out of the get go and you go, that's my sound. But then I may do something like what's on the floor. I might not compress those at all just because of the way, if I want a spot that has some space to it but doesn't have the added side effects of compression, that's my go-to. I can always pull my compressed mics in when I need it. And in this case, you know what? Let's see something. I'm going to pull in. Play me a groove. So this is So I could actually use combinations of these. That was the, the 4080s compressed and the low mics on the floor at the same time. So you could even combine those and come up with some cool sounds or compress later too. But generally, nowadays, I always have at least one set that I, I get in a spot and I go, I don't need the compression. I like how they do something for me with the kit that way. And then I have my compressed pair. The 4080s, I like clean and compressed, which is why I started to split them. So I have that option later during mixing. Most of the time, I'm going to lean towards the compressed one on those, but I have it there in case I need to redo something. This is a common setup. I may probably... If we were doing a session, I may have one more set up on the wall wide facing the wall that are just going most likely that those will go through my overstayer and get hit fairly hard. And I would have that. But kind of the, the thing is these three setups, I know for a fact, work in smaller rooms as well. And bi obviously bigger rooms. So that's why I don't mention that because we know you work in a big room. Most things you can make work, but you get in smaller rooms and it gets harder. But I can tell you a Blumline pair of ribbons, or if you've got condensers that have multi-patterns, or, you know, uh, Cascade makes the X-15. You have the, what is the, the Royer, the, um, I want to say XF-24 is the stereo one. Not sure on that. That are single, single housing, but have the, the two ribbons in them. So you have your Blumline all in one, one microphone. The trick against the wall, whether it's a 57 or something else, I know these work in, in about any freaking room because I've used them in about any size room from small to way bigger than my room and, and all successfully. But if you're at home, even if you're in your bedroom or garage, man, a, a blum line of a ribbon, boom, five feet in front of the drum set, even six feet in front of the kit, a little bit of compression, you'd be surprised how much of a room sound you could add with that. So give it a shot. Try these things out. You can even try the mics on the floor. You could try it just mono. Just take one, put it down as close to the floor, just so you can run a business card between the mic and the floor. Put it mono in front of the kit and maybe compress a little bit and see what happens. That can be really cool, too. So anyway, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Thank you guys for joining us. Hal, give me some big Tom groove, man. I wanna, I'm going to turn the big mics on.